Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 223. Aaron, three significant because this is the first show where we have the three seat configuration because we have a very special guest today, Sharks, uh, pre, post, and intermission live host, Mr. <laughs> Alan Hoshida. Hey, don't forget about those intermissions. Yeah, the inter hey, they're important. Yeah, yeah, they are, but they go quick. <laughs> Very good. Uh, actually, uh, the other three here is that since you two know each other, I might end up being the third wheel in this episode here. <laughs> so, uh, Aaron, you ready? Ready. Alan, you ready? Let's do it. Let's get it on. So once again, uh, back here, episode 223 with uh, Alan Hashida here. Aaron, uh, as we mentioned earlier, you actually know Alan. You want to explain to the audience how that can be. Sure. Going way back to, I think it was around 2010. Had to be. Um, Alan and I played soccer together. I was running a co-ed soccer team, and a mutual friend who was on the team brought on Alan because they worked together at the time, and uh, we got to play soccer together for a full, what is that, summer season in Palo Alto, and yeah. it was it, we were just reminiscing about how... Dirty that soccer team, not our team, right. but the league itself was just <laughs> somehow always the fun leagues always seem to be the most contact and people take it the most serious. You're like, you're all going to join a social league, whether that's beer league or whatever yeah. it is for hockey. You're just then everyone takes it way too serious. <laughs> someone ends up getting injured and you're just way too what, serious. Yeah. Too many people need to prove things when yeah. they're adults. Their glory days are exactly. far past. Yes. Well, and I'm not like Aaron and played. So I don't have any glory days of soccer. <laughs> like I mean, if we go back to like youth, we could play youth soccer, and that was fun. But I never, yeah, never Alan took was, a pass. Alan was pretty good on our team. I was, I was very happy to invite him and have him on our team because at that point, I think we had a handful of people that never even played youth soccer. So, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it helped. It was I was, you know, I was in shape back then, better shape. That was before kids, yeah. you know, and <laughs> still had a little speed. I always had a little speed, but and I remember my, my great conversation. There was like, oh, you run flat. Then I'll send it through, and that's when you take off. So I always remember that conversation. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but every time I see anything that comes up with your name or Fin Factor, or like reminiscing, I'm like always remember that. We're like, all right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna cut through, and then I scored a goal. And it works, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's good. I kind of knew what I was talking about. Yeah, right? and you're a goalie. You're hey, a keeper. Yo. So yeah. yeah, there you go. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, the throwback. <laughs> yeah, and you're a goalie. Well. That was goalie, a trade. Goalies sit and watch a lot of soccer because yeah. you're yeah. sitting there waiting for the ball. So you, you're, you're kind of like coaching. And even in the game as a goalie, you're telling people where to go and what to do and pass, man on, all that stuff. Well, know, we so. would pull. He was a keeper by like his actual trade of the sport. But we were so bad that we needed to pull him out of the net. And so he'd come play like midfield or something or set it through. So he wasn't always keeper with us. That's just right. Yeah. That's what you. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I think we had Miguel as our goalie. Yeah. You remember Miguel? Miggs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There you go. Hi, yeah. Miguel. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got uh, quite the background here. I've so I watched some of your. Uh, you had a, a clip, uh, video of clips from 2024. I think that you had put out. Um, I think that was you putting out because it, it was on your channel. I thought. Yeah. Okay, and I happened to see something about uh, a Hawaiian football team that was there. And I just thought that was really interesting. But before we get into that, maybe um, just kind of, if you can walk through, uh, you had some broadcast journalism experience and whatnot, yeah. so. We're going back. Uh, yeah. So I start. I went to San Francisco State mm -hmm. and I did broadcast journalism, Becca as they call it back then, graduated in 2011. Uh, and that's kind of always where I wanted to go. If we go back, really back on my background i was grew up doing musical theater and oh, so wow. i was doing theater stuff and i was playing sports at the same time and so when college rolled around i always say like what did i want to do to kind of blend the both of them together and uh it just seemed like it was a natural thing i was always looking at stats and stuff and so yeah. that's how i kind of got to that point went to SF state uh interned at then csn California and Bay Area yeah. back in the day, 2010. Throwback name. Right yeah, there. yeah. And even yesterday, I, yesterday I was in, or two days ago, because we didn't have the game yesterday, but or when uh, I called the Comcast, I was like, oh yeah. So I interned there, interned at KGO in San Francisco as well, and uh, did that, and then I started working at CSN as a PA, AP. Did that for about four or five years, and then we got to a point where they're like, okay you either need to go do your on-air stuff or you're gonna be here and we're gonna get you to produce and go that route, uh, which isn't a bad job either. Producing is a great job. Um, but then I went on air, went to Humboldt for a year and then went to Eastern Washington. I was a sports director for four years 
And then uh, went to Hawaii. And that's when the, the Hawaii stuff is all in there too as well. But I was Hawaii for three years and then came home, started family or started family, then came home. And now kind of things started to align and didn't know this was all going to be taking place as it did, but it did. And now we're doing it. Nice. So yeah, that's kind of the, the short route of if we do a spark notes version to the full circle of the west coast pretty much plus hawaii <laughs> yeah it was awesome i love like i when i first got into the career i was like oh, i don't never want to leave california like that it's just you grow up here you don't want to leave it's like oh maybe i'll go to monterey the smaller markets uh, i didn't even want to go to bakersfield which is a small market that you could probably break into so i was very particular on where i wanted to go which kind of um put handcuffs handcuffs on what you wanted to do so uh but now moving around was awesome and i loved moving around i learned so much about just other people Mm -hmm. other states um you just get to explore a little bit more and then obviously hawaii is fantastic yeah i love hawaii um we probably wouldn't have came home if we didn't have (laughs) kids and then want to get with family uh but yeah hawaii is a special special place and uh if you can assimilate and you can be welcomed and you can uh, kind of be a part of Hawaii and not just a visitor of Hawaii, um, it becomes something that just fully stays with you and it always will stay with me. I mean, you'll see like I post Aloha Fridays and stuff and I wear Aloha shirts a lot, so much so that the other day when my boss was like, do you have anything that doesn't have like Aloha print on it <laughs> or, or floral? And I'm like, yeah, but why wear that? You gotta wear it. So uh, yeah. Uh, Hawaii, out of those three, obviously, there's different, you know, Humboldt's got their own culture and their own things, I guess is the right way, the nice way to say things about, <laughs> you know, what's going on up there. Eastern Washington's cool. Love going to Seattle, but yeah, Hawaii was awesome. Very good. Anything else to, to follow up on? Uh, well, you are from Gilroy, yeah. too. I don't know yes. you mentioned that. Oh, so. yeah, I am from Gilroy, going like further back <laughs> yeah, where yeah. I was actually born. Yeah. I was born in Mountain View, but uh, grew up in Gilroy my whole life. Been, my parents are still in the same house. That's cool. Went to Gilroy High, a Mustang, just like, I don't know, five other high schools in this area are Mustangs. Yeah. They're blue and yellow. Santa just like, Teresa. <laughs> yeah, five other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We played Santa Teresa, I'm sure it's something. So yeah. like, uh, yeah, grew up in Gilroy. Garth Festival should come back, but it'll never come back unless they adjust some things. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, Gilroy kid. And just, I, I mean, I remember just going like to games and everything. Dustin too. Wolf, right? Of now the Calgary yeah. Flames. Just, yeah. Who knew Gilroy was a hockey hotbed of <laughs> yeah. California? I, I I always think that's really cool. I know he moved out to Livermore at one point, but yeah, the Gilroy's got got some hockey in him. So that's and that's and that's kind of a direct correlation of the Sharks, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. If you, if the Sharks aren't here and they don't build the rinks, those kids aren't going to be playing. And we kind of talk you talk talk about the California stuff, but yeah, Gilroy. Where I'm from, and so I have family there. So I have my best friend still lives there, and I'm always down there like once once a month. It's yeah. tough to see my family, my brother, mm-hmm. my parents. So yeah, it's good. So so you've covered a lot of different teams um, and a lot of different sports. So like how how difficult is it to like speak like intelligently about a specific sport when you're when you've changed one to a, another like throughout your career? It's a great question. I just have never really thought about it okay. because. I grew up playing a lot of sports and I think that helped me like even as a kid, I just played all every youth sport that I could play. The only sport I didn't play growing up was football. Um, and that's mostly because I always wanted to, but I was always doing, I always had a summer show, a musical theater show that I would be doing. Mm. And so I can't, back then they did double days yeah. and, and they weren't like coaches weren't, no. they weren't, they weren't <laughs> about you missing practice yeah. for a, a musical theater. Yeah. So uh, I didn't get to play football, um, but I followed football and that's one of the easier sports to follow as like understanding. I couldn't understand the intricacies of it, but broader stuff like that. So I never really thought about it, but lately I have because now I'm just covering hockey, which has been a lot easier where you're not di- not spreading it. But I don't know. I just never thought about it. Like I played volleyball. And so in Hawaii, volleyball is huge. And some people go to Hawaii and they're like, oh, I don't know much about volleyball. And you learn and you just kind of go with it. The other thing about Hawaii that I didn't know was like surfing. Well, not, not a big surfer. Yeah. So you just kind of start learning and you ask people the right questions and figure out what's important as far as how to cover it and um, what terms. I think the main thing is if you're covering a sport is get the terms right yeah. mm-hmm. and not sound uh, 
that you're <laughs> just learning the sport. So it's, it's funny it. because uh, when we first started doing the show, Super Producer Jason would call games matches yes. because of soccer. Yeah. Is that what you were thinking of just yeah. now? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just again using the wrong term there like obviously it meant yeah. well <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, I was also thinking the meme of hello fellow kids <laughs> Steve Buscemi dressed yeah. as a kid so that's it I just think you just gotta kind of I, I think it goes back to when, about moving around mm -hmm. and joining different communities you just got to have to immerse, immerse yourself in it and be a part of it and learn what makes that place special and the same with sports is what what makes that sport unique or what makes uh what is the talking points for that sport and yeah. then you kind of go from there and, and and really if you're looking at games and stuff every every game has a turning point every game True. Yeah. has runs yeah. but different like you just look at trends that are kind of similar and if you could do that then you're probably going to latch on like basketball and volleyball are similar as they go on runs like if, if a team goes on a 7-0 run, that's probably a big deal. So you yeah. just kind of look at things that are similar, you know, soccer, hockey, field hockey, all these other sports are kind of similar too. So you can kind of latch on to different kind of mentalities within the game. How would you rank the sports in terms of like, what's your number one sport? What's your number two for viewing? Not so much playing, but viewing. Well, I loved hockey. Always have loved hockey. It's, it's, uh, it's funny I say that and... People are like, oh, not real. I've always said that. And when I was at different places across the country, and they're like, why do you like, why do you like hockey? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, Tri-Cities. I uh, had a WHL team, the Tri-City Americans, so that was really cool. But, yeah, I love hockey. Always have loved wa watching hockey. Watch golf a lot. Um, football. Basketball, baseball. I mean, kind of like that. I do love watching volleyball, too. Mm. But I, it always usually starts with hockey, and especially over the last few months. I haven't watched a lot of, like, someone was like, oh, have you watched a lot of the World Series? I'm like, no, I've been watching the Sharks yeah. struggle. Yeah, that's me. Games. <laughs> yeah, same. But, and they're like, oh, why haven't you watched the World Series? Like, I don't know, just, it was on last night, too, and I didn't yeah. even, I was like, oh, i got to get ready for the game. I didn't, we didn't even have the game last night against the Kings, so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Those are, that's kind of how it goes in my ranking. That's, that's kind of how I am, too. I would rather watch, um, like, a preseason Sharks game than, like, the Super Bowl, <laughs> frankly. Like, that's just... I'd... Well, I wouldn't go out of that much. No, no, for me, that. though. <laughs> yeah, for me, I could care less that's about a... the other sports. I, I hate the Dodgers, and my <laughs> wife's a Red Sox fan, so she yeah. hates the Yankees, so our house is like, we don't care about this World Series. Yeah. I'd rather watch the Sharks... I mean, the Sharks didn't lose last night, but I'd rather watch the Sharks lose 10 nothing than watch this World Series right now because I just don't like either team. This yeah, it's a, it's a tough one to get behind, especially because they are two teams that have such passionate fans and such loyal fans and such hated, also such hated fans, yes. like people that hate them, such haters. So I think it is a world, especially this World Series is a hard one to kind of get behind. But I mean, it's going to be historic and good for one of those franchises. I, I hope. I don't want the Yankees to win, <laughs> but I don't want the Dodgers to win. So I kind of hope that the Dodgers embarrass and lose. Like gets they're up three nothing or they were up three nothing in the series now it's three to one. And get if they game get a seven, reverse sweep, get a little reverse oh, sweep. Be amazing. <laughs> it would be such a great seen those before. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you said that you didn't play football. Uh, I didn't play football either. I was on the team. I just didn't get to play. Oh, all right. uh, which so is you unfortunate. Made the I was on. I was on the team. There but, you go. Uh, I didn't didn't get many reps. So you got to so, practice yeah. and get pads. Uh, yeah. Um, so the coach actually didn't even know my name. He called me. <laughs> he called me. He said, "Good hit, Sunsri." Oh, uh, that was, yeah, so fantastic little nugget for you guys there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that was fun. Anyway, um, I kind of want to move on from from some of that stuff and talk a little bit about the now, though. Um, obviously, the guy that was in your position previously, Brody Brazil, um, a lot of people really liked him. But when he first came on the scene, including myself, a lot of people did not like him. <laughs> and I was, who is this goofy Brody Brazil, what kind of name is this, bud? Come on, like whoever gave you that name, like it couldn't have been your parents, right? This, some some producer was like, hey, you know what would be great? We call you Brody Brazil, uh, and even he said this, so it's okay for us to make a little poke a little fun at it because even he was like, no, that's my real name. Yeah. He had to explain this to people. Yeah. Um, so you don't have that problem, which no. is great. No. Um, but again, there's a lot of people that that uh, did like him uh, up until the point where uh, he had to move on. I'm just curious about your experience so far. Um, have, have you had a, a welcomed reception uh, with the fan base? I know change is hard. So yeah. um, just kind of, in, in, what have you seen so far? Well, as far as how 
I think overall, I think the fan base has very, been very welcoming to me. I, I went to a couple practices and everyone was, was like kind and said congratulations and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, social media is a cesspool. And so uh, <laughs> you can't really take what happens on, you know, what hap- what's said on yeah. Twitter or bet- between uh, anonymous emoji or some someone who doesn't even have their name attached to their uh, yeah. icon, which I always think is great. Like if you're going to say something... <laughs> At least get behind it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, not just lay it out there. But uh, yeah, but I think overall, like, it's been good. I haven't really got any. I you know, you get one-off messages, but overall, I think it's been good, and I think it does play well. That I have been a fan, and hopefully, it comes across that I've been a fan when when I'm doing the shows. That it's not that I'm just picking up a the team or b yeah. hockey for the first time, and so I really do enjoy that. That I think I can relate to you know the pain, and even on a uh, Monday, when they played Utah, man, me and Nolly were going crazy. <laughs> we were, I thought they had a camera rolling because I thought we were going to see it, but we were going crazy. And it was just one of those like m- moments that you still realize as much as this becomes a job and a profession. And, um, you know, I'm in a host role. I'm not, I wouldn't say as much like I'm a journalist anymore. Mm-hmm. Like there's, I think also there casual people within the industry or fans or viewers don't really know the distinction between like a host, a journalist and a columnist. And that runs into problems because, mm-hmm. or a reporter, like reporters are different than columnists and such like there's different integrities with attached to those things. But uh, overall, yeah, as a host, I can be a little bit more, you know, Homer-ish yeah. because we are on the Sharks, uh, you know, affiliate and like that. But um, yeah, it's just been good. I think overall it's just been good and I appreciate it. And like the names that I think of that it really mean the most to me, obviously my family and friends and all that, but like grew up listening to Randy Mm -hmm. and Drew and Dan Mm -hmm. and those three guys have been outstanding and, you know, taking time to walk me through things or here's what, you know, I think what will help you or like, so those three guys who I obviously mean a ton to the fan base and I will defer to them at all times mm-hmm. because they just mean so much. Um, they've been great. So, the, you know, I, c- I can't ask for anything more there. And I will say with Brody, Brody has been uh, someone who's been, I said it in kind of like my introductory like article thing that I wrote for myself. That was all me. That was all my own words. But he's been such an influence in my life that it was, you ride this line of like, yeah, I'm accomplishing something I've always wanted to accomplish something a goal of mine but then you understand the circumstances that you're stepping into the situation and brody's been outstanding to me picked up the phone whenever i needed advice throughout whether that's like should i take this step contract stuff i i remember calling him on my way back from hawaii without a job um and like what should i do and so i don't think people understand like it wasn't easy for me to be like oh i'm gonna I mean, it was easy to accept, but it was not easy to go through that situation knowing how much Brody has meant to my career Mm -hmm. and still means to my career. And he's gave me some great advice because I worked there. Like I came back from paternity leave and still, you know, Brody, the A's were finishing up their season. So Brody was still in the house and we had a conversation, a couple conversations, and he just was great to me about just, and like you said, he's just like, guys, people don't like change. So just go out, do the best job that you can you know, work hard and people are going to see that and then just keep going. And, and he even alluded to what you said too. the first year he joined yeah. Randy and Drew, people were like, why, is this why guy? is this guy in <laughs> yeah. here? So, you know, I hope people understand that Brody probably means more to me than he does to you. Okay. And in the sense of like his actual impact on my life. And so, you know, I think I'm glad I have that ability to say that. Um, because it's one thing for everyone to watch him and see what he does. It's another one, like, he's he's made that part of who I am. And, like, there's probably a little bit of similarities. I've watched him so much that a little bit of what I desire to be as an on-air personality or host is probably, like, a little bit rubbed off of what I saw from Brody. So um, it's, it's, it's a compli- it, was, it was a complicated experience, uh, especially when up until when I could cross paths with Brody because I was on paternity leave and didn't have that ability. But once that happened, it, I just, it made things a whole lot, you know, smoother. And yeah, I'm excited. I was excited and so excited. And I hopefully over time, 
well, we'll stay here. Like, I don't plan on leaving until, yeah. and they, unless they show, you know, show me the door too. So uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll be here for a while. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if that all. No, Brody's, Brody's a good guy. He was, uh, I interviewed him on Barry at Bias Days. This is like over 10 years ago. Um, and that was the first time that I remember that was the time when a lot of people just, you know, the hate was flowing and they just did not like this guy. And I'm like, why? He, he grew up in the Bay Area. Yeah. Like, he's a fan of the teams that we're all fans of. Why do people... Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, we go way back, and he's he's a good guy. He's, he's a great. very good person, and, and we wish him the best. He's a good dude. Yeah, I just think overall, like, you got to embrace change. Mm-hmm. Like, change, if you are afraid of change, you're afraid of challenge. And I think you learn more, and this is more philosophical than anything, but you learn more about yourself when the moments of change or moments of challenge, and so... Like embrace that in life. If that's my, if you were watching this and you didn't like change, that's that's my point. <laughs> embrace it because it's not, especially having kids. It changes. It changes. Yeah, it right? changes. But yeah. but also, you could be doing something for a week or a month or a year, and everything's working out with the kid, and then all of a sudden the kid changes, and you gotta change, and you can you just gotta adapt. So just change is inevitable. It's inevitable. Alan Hashida. Host and philosopher. I love it. It's fantastic. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that went to LinkedIn. Right, there you go. <laughs> Put it on the resume. There you go. Um, okay, so is there something else you wanted to ask about? No. Let's, no? Uh, let's get into the now of, okay. of the San Jose Sharks. So uh, let's start. Um, I'm going to go to the beginning of the season. Okay. What were your thoughts on this season at the beginning of the season? Like, where did you think the Sharks were going to end up being especially in relation to last year being so far yeah. behind everyone else. How many how many leaps and how much better do you think they were than they were last year? I don't think, I mean, I think I was like, with like a lot of people, I thought they were going to take a big step forward. Nine, from 19 games, though, a big step forward is like 25. Yeah. You know, 30, maybe. like Because if you're even thinking about 30, that's 11 more wins out of 19. So I was... I was encouraged that they're going to take the next step. There was a ton of momentum. Like my thing, whole thing was like at the end of last year, you don't know if you're going to get celebrating. Well, you don't know if you're going to get the number one pick. Mm -hmm. And then how quickly that all changed. Once you do get the number one pick, there was a huge amount of underground swell from Sharks fans. Everyone started feeling it. Like Mm -hmm. there was just a better feeling. And you felt that when you went to training camp. And so I think there was a lot of energy. And I thought for sure, I thought the team was going to take a step forward. I still believe that. And I still think they are. And I've had this conversation is even throughout this whole process, I think they're taking step forwards. It's just one of those things that you can't see really until you start seeing the results and getting W's. That's yeah. the most marketed way to see, oh yeah, they're making a step forward. But there's different things that don't always show up that you're like, oh yeah, like they don't quit this season. Mm-hmm. They And I shouldn't say quit. I think quit is a strong word. But if... The other team scores a couple goals. You don't kind of see that Def- let deflated, down, deflated, yeah. that let down. They kind of push back. Obviously, against uh, the Jets and against at, and the Vegas weren't good, but those are also two teams that yeah. have over a hundred points. So mm-hmm. at the beginning of the year, I really thought they're going to take a step forward. I think they're forward. I think they're a deeper team, um, and I thought their defense was better, and their goalies were the. You know, McKenzie was coming back. I thought that was mm-hmm. pretty good. I think he's in a good spot. So I thought, yeah, they had, they had to make up to take a step forward. What that step forward looks like is varying on what you believe is a step forward. How how <laughs> how teal glass like how how teal are the glasses you're wearing, and how you know objective you are about whatever that step forward is. Well, last last season they started off with what ten straight losses, right? Twelve. Uh, Twelve? Yeah. Twelve straight losses. 12, so yeah. well, only nine. That's a step forward, right? <laughs> I mean, there's a, I mean, if you're look I think there's a plenty of things that you're looking at through the first now eleven games, um, and maybe when the series is a little bit more, but there's been a marked improvement and mm-hmm. there's been steps t- nights where you took a step back and I think, you know, Randy and Drew said it at one point that any progress isn't linear. But overall, they're competing a whole lot more for full 60 minutes as much as you know you can there's they still have five pockets where it's like five minutes seven minutes half a period where they're not playing as well as they'd want to and during that road trip it was the first 10 minutes of every single game Mm -hmm. which is just going to put you way behind the eight ball but you know they they're more competitive i think they're harder to play against for the most part you saw it against the kings where they're way better on their sticks and in position 
uh, in their defensive zone. They were getting to kind of rebound controls a little bit better. Uh, their PK is better. It's, they still have moments where it's not as good, but against the Kings, they just went six for six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Their power play, my hot take, and I told Aaron this, my hot take was that they're going to be a top 10 power play. I also said this when we thought Macklin Celebrini was, you know, and he's come, hopefully coming back yeah. here in the next few days or a week or so. That's, that's a big difference, too, having that guy out for the, yeah. almost every single game. And they're game. still, they were 12th last yeah. night going into that Kings game. That's what I was going to pull up right now to see what it, if it changed <laughs> at all. <laughs> it probably has changed because they went, I think they went over last night, which is never a good night, but so the Kings, so you're washed. But yeah, I think, and their power play is better, especially if you get. Macklin back in the lineup, still bringing you back in the lineup. That second power play unit looks a whole lot more dangerous than the, the guys that you're putting out there right now. And so, Ooh. you know. Yeah, they dropped from 12th to 17th. Yeah, because of last night. Early, early I mean, in the season. Yeah. It's early. But I, I still think they have the potential to be, you know, top 12 power plays even mm-hmm. really good. They were top 20 last year or 20th or something. And a couple years before that, they were not top was, yeah. awful. really yeah. bad. So. I think they are making steps, and also the things like you don't see, the, all the post-game press conferences with the guys, there's still belief, even when it was going bad, is that, you know, they thought they were going to win. Yes, towards the, you know, 7, 8, 9, it was getting kind of harder. Mm-hmm. You could feel it that it was getting harder, but that's, I mean, you got to think about, it. it's hard in professional sports to lose nine games. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just in any sport, especially, I mean, if you're looking at football, it's crazy. But, you know, when the one of the 82 game seasons or even yeah. baseball to lose nine games in a row mm. as a prof, in a professional sport is hard to do because you could get a bounce here and there. And yeah. so it was weighing on them, but they always felt like they believed. And then you even had Mario Ferraro on the night before <laughs> saying that they're going to win. They yeah. were down four to one. And it wasn't and looking game, good. You know? but then they turned it around. So I think there there's... I think there's a great amount of improvement. Um, and, you know, they're still going to have struggles. They still might have four or five game losing streaks. But they're, I think, I think their goal this year, and, and it's not even what I think, it's what Coach Worsowski has been saying, is that they want to be respected again. And don't, even if you lose, they want it to not, like the Jets were having fun. Yeah. yeah. They don't want those games anymore. Yeah. They want you to if you you got to work for those wins. I think they're they're on their way. They're gonna have they're gonna have moments where they take step backs. I think it's also a good sign that they haven't done this without seventy one. Yeah. And I mean, it's crazy. And think about it, he's eighteen years old. I know. And a young eighteen. He, yeah. He's young too. eighteen. Yeah. And every practice he's out there first, and every practice he's a part of, he looks like one of the top players on that team. And so you're doing all this. You're being competitive for the most part with exception of, you know, a few games and lulls without that guy. And he changes that lineup mostly because I just think it stretches it out a little bit more. Um, and so if he comes back and they, they keep playing hard and pushing hard and doing those detailed things that you always talk about, they'll be fine. And I just think as fans, what, what is the realistic outcome here? Yeah. What do you what what do you want? And I think yeah. that's where you can kind of vary with things. I, I think the fact that they won back to back on a back to back night, coming yeah. home traveling and winning that that's like basically a scheduled loss against the Kings. Any the first game of road trip or first game back from any road trip yeah. is basically like that. Whether yeah. or not you get the day off or not. Yeah. But they I thought they played very well against the Kings. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like it wasn't a game where like the, let's take the very first game that we were at this season where they're playing uh was it Nashville that night? I think no Blues. It? Blues, sorry. Yeah. Um, that game seemed like I even said it to Paul. I think in the third period, the beginning of the third period, we're up four to one. I go, this game feels like we're losing this game, and we're up four to one. It just feels weird because the Sharks got a bunch of lucky bounces that night, and we're up four to one on a decent team, right? Sorry, and I thought you were going to say because we're so used to losing. That well, that too, of the that score. too. Yes, <laughs> but it was kind of like when they started scoring, you're kind of like, okay, here we go. Here's yeah. the real Sharks that we're used to in the last <laughs> year or two, right? Like, they're just going to blow it, and they, they did. But my point was, like, the game last night felt very different where the Sharks, I felt like the Sharks were, I mean, it was back and forth, but mm-hmm. the Sharks were in control of that game, and earned that win. It wasn't like it was a lucky win. It was, an, it was a very hard win. That was first game win. they've not lot, lot, not fell behind. Not fell behind yeah. all year, all year. Yeah, and see, even when even when the Kings pushed back and got a goal, 
The Sharks answered. Now, I think the biggest, what they have to do now is manage when they get the lead or when they get momentum because so often it's even less, even against the Kings, Mm -hmm. who's within two minutes Mm -hmm. after they scored, LA scored within two minutes. And that just isn't, you, you have to hold momentum. You have to. And I think that's part of winning. And that's, I know people say it and I know, I think winning, learning how to win is a skill. You just have to learn how to win, especially when you have some scar tissue with all the losses. And so you have to learn how to win. You have to learn how to carry that momentum, how to not the next shift give up all five chances on net. Yeah. One of those is going on, going in. And so I think that's the next step if you want to have some sustained success. But yeah, I think, I mean, the Kings, they play good. I want to ask you guys, hmm. what was that building like? Because we had, so I was going to try and go to that game. And then we had a final dress rehearsal, which I, I agree with. We probably need the dress rehearsal because, you know, I'm new. I'm trying to make, make sure we got the rundown and things all in order. But I was like, man, I wanted to go to that game. And we were watching the game for the first, like, 40 minutes. I was like, dude, plan the parade. We're yeah. winning this thing. We're, yeah. but, and it felt like, it felt like the crowd was into it like of I, old i had said like it was the loudest i think i've heard the arena in uh probably since the last time they were in the playoffs which was the vegas game yeah obviously that was what the loudest the building's probably ever been but um it wasn't quite that loud but it was a. Uh, this is the sharks of old when pavelski thornton yeah. marlo all those guys were in their prime um i thought it was a great atmosphere and so much hope and excitement because of Celebrini and Smith in the lineup. Uh, it was also like they introduced everybody. So yeah. yeah, it was a very long drawn out intro to start the game, but um, that's the loudest I think yeah. I've heard. It. And I think regardless of what the actual decibel levels were, right. I think it was just when you, when you were going to sharks games before and it was just the other team would score and oh, the whole building's just dead. It yeah. doesn't matter how you did the whole building's dead. Mm-hmm. Um, even before puck drop, there was, again, this air of excitement uh, around a new younger core that was starting off that season. Uh, having Logan Couture even on the bench in his suit mm-hmm. and tie, big reception from the fans. And, of course, Coach Ryan Warsawski, again, another big reception from them as well. But it was just this this air of excitement, again, that you just haven't felt in years so, um, and I think that carried throughout a good portion of the game up until the very end. Yeah. Um, but again, it was just one of those things where you see Macklin doing Macklin things mm-hmm. and the fans are kind of realizing, man, this is our future here. This is what we're going get, to get to watch, not just for tonight. This is what we're going to get to watch for years. You the, know? the team was also very different from last season. Like, there's yeah. such a big turnover from the roster itself. Yeah. Um, plus you have... There's 10 different injuries. players. That, op- that opening night, there was 10 players... Out of mm. what is it, 20, 23, 23 or, yeah, that were not on the team or played very like Daniel Gushin was in that lineup, yeah. and he played a handful of games, two or three games last mm-hmm. year. So, yeah, like you said, it's it was brand new and it still is. Like, if you look at the roster, it's so different from last year, yeah. Uh, that I don't know how many guys feel this that last year's despair. I mean, there's guys on there that do, but it, it's so different. Um, I think it's that's a good point. Ferraro is like the only one that kind of gaps the bridge, bridge the gap of uh, like the tail end of when they were good in the playoffs to now because he was and especially right now because Vlasic and yeah. Couture are playing. And that's it. That's so. like the last kind of piece going back however many seasons that is. What I think my boy Nico Stern might have been part of that too. I don't know. What? No. When no, the last time they were in the playoffs. Oh, playoffs? No, yeah, no, no, yeah, like, no, never mind. Never mind. You know, when they were good and then that first season after they get all the way to the conference finals against the Blues and they just tanked and that was like a shock around yeah. the league. I thought it was a shock around the league of, man, that, that cliff just came real quick and they fell off it really fast. So um, not a lot of carryover, I mean, even just from one season. Yeah. I mean, go back two seasons, it's even more. It's crazy. Yeah. And I think that was off purposeful purposeful because last year uh you just didn't you didn't have a roster that was going to be able to compete in in the nhl night in and night out and i think this year some you do have that to an extent i think their deal is they need a little bit more scoring they need someone to kind of step up and have a career year i thought cardwell looked actually really good last Mm -hmm. night um and i you know whatever that offense is going to be but I will say from top to bottom, they have a lot more professionals. 
like Nico Sturm, you know what you're going to get. Yeah. Mario mm-hmm. Ferrari, you know what you're going to get. Uh, Cunning, you know what you're going to get. Alex Wenberg, who's ascended here the, over the last week, yeah. is playing a lot. Like early on in the season with Wenberg, he was doing pretty good, but his offense wasn't really there. And um, he started to take that step, obviously, with the OT winner. But he's also just looked a little more comfortable. Um, and then obviously good rows in the lineup. You just have a lot more pros. Yeah. That Granlin. Yeah. Grandland. Has been fantastic. And Granlin's been yeah. great. And and as just as the bottom six, like last year the bottom six was going yeah. to be a huge issue yeah. at the time yeah. they were on the ice. And now those it's better. It's just yeah. So obviously I mean obviously the top line, like the top four guys really, if you Tofoli, Granlin, Eklund, yeah. and Fabian Zetterlin. Uh going into that Utah game, the top line had scored twenty three of the team's forty six points. <laughs> So uh, you weren't getting a lot from everyone else. But now you have Wallman who had six in last right. uh Fabian has three goals. So, and Fabian, I think if you added the Fabian into that f- top line, I think it's probably, because he probably has seven, seven points or mm-hmm. so. So it's probably like 30. So yeah. those four guys are accounting for, I don't know. All the offense. Yeah, all yeah, the yeah, offense. Yeah. But now it's kind of, you've seen it where they're starting to kind of balance out a little bit. Um, and especially if you can get some scoring from the defense, like Wallman, yeah, uh, that'd be really good. But we we've talked about this before too, and it was mas- mostly I really like Nico Sturm, by the way. It's yeah. Mostly in, in my defense of Nico Sturm because uh, he keeps saying how he's going to get replaced, and I keep talking about him getting extended for eight more years because I love the guy. Um, it's a joke. But there's <laughs> yeah. he's not in on the joke. You he's not in on the joke. That makes it funnier. So. <laughs> Um, but for me, um, there's more to just the goals and assists columns, right? Yep. Um, you you don't get those opportunities if guys like Nico Sturm or Wenberg are not winning those faceoffs in the offensive zone or starting off with the puck in the defensive zone, yep. so you can get the heck out of there. Wenberg, right? Wenberg's won all three of those draws in Utah. Fantastic, he was huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Nico Sturm a lot too. I thought actually he was going to get an A. I'm and surprised that he didn't because um, he's a guy who, and you've already seen it. Steps yeah. up to the mic. It was great. Uh, Says how it is. I think he's an important piece for a team, uh, for this team too. But to Aaron's point, he's an important piece for a team that wants to win a Stanley Cup. Agreed. So whether it's, it'd be great if he's around here long term, a couple, maybe a year or two. But he's not also also the youngest guy. No. So you know maybe he wants to go get another cup or something like that. Because I think he's on. He's twenty nine. He's in his last year right now. Last year. So yeah. you know. I'll, I'll have him play till he's forty four. I don't even care. <laughs> Come around <laughs> <a> trade <laughs> deadline. I, but I think this that's a conversation with not just Nico Sturm. A yeah, lot of the yeah, guys yeah. who are on towards you know player friendly deals or whatever you want to call it. That's going to come up when the trade deadline comes up because there are a lot of guys, the professionals on the bottom six, or that could help a team that's in Stanley sure. Cup contention. Nico Sturm, I think, is a great dish guy. He's fast. He battles. Uh, but right now, he's a, that the Sharks have a lot of centers. Yeah. And I think that's also by design because they didn't know what was going to happen with Couture and they still don't know what's going to happen with Logan. Um, but, and they it seems like they want Will Smith to really play in the center. They're mm-hmm. not going to put him on the wing where they did like kind of with Hurdle. Mm-hmm. Um, let him play wing and then transition him. But it seems like they really want him to play in the wing. So if you're looking at it, you have Granlin, who's not, Granlin started on the wing, he's not going back yeah. to the wing. I, th- I, don't, I don't know if you even break up that line, but I think you, when Celebrating comes back, my gut instinct is you, you still do because Celebrating with Toffoli is probably better for his development yeah. and also. But anyways, you have Granlin, you have Celebrini, you have Wenberg, you have Will Smith, good, good role play center, typically. And then you also have Nico Sturm. So you have six centers. And his point is uh, Beastead will probably end up taking over uh, for Nico Sturm. At some point, fourth line this center. year. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. If anything, I, after the yeah. trade deadline, he's gone. Oh, I think Beastead's a up. third line center. Okay, yeah. and it's like his development. I think I mean, we talked about Beastead the other day because we had Nick Nolenberger on, who's the voice of Barracuda. Mm-hmm. He's you have Celebrini and Will Smith, who also I still think I still believe in Will Smith, and I think everyone needs to pump the brakes on the yeah. kid who's, <laughs> yes. who's nineteen years old. Yeah, and funny, we talked about that yeah, recently. Yeah. Nineteen years old, and he he has a body of a 19, 20 year old. Mm-hmm. I mean, a professional nineteen and twenty year old, but. He's going to be, uh, he last night when you Anze Kopitar and him were against each other, like he's nineteen. This other dude's been in the league for almost twenty years. Yeah. Like, give the kid some time. But anyways, so but Celebrini and Smith are similar skill offensive players. Beastead is 6'2", 220. different center, and yes. he's a definitely I think a guy that they believe in, and I think that's who they hope 
is their one, two, three. And if that's your one, two, three, and it works out because there's some big ifs still, that's a lot of good. Now you're just trying to figure out your fourth line center. Mm -hmm. That's solid. And that's, I feel a little easier to find Absolutely. these days than yeah. a top three, top, you know, first, second line, you, third line center. I, I think it's been said that, or Greer has said that you can't, you can't go out and get how many centers are out there that you can go get that are going to be difference makers. They just don't go out there because people aren't selling their centers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to draft centers. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's his philosophy and we'll see how it all he's works out. He's done very well in the draft in my opinion. Yeah. He's turned this team around in the two and a half seasons really that he's been yeah. here. Yeah. Beastead was his first too and he yeah. stepped into the job like I think three days before yeah. like mm -hmm. a week before. And so that's That draft I feel like wasn't quite him yeah. because he just came into the job yeah. right before the draft. Yeah. I'm sure maybe if he, they got to a guy and he like absolutely despised yeah. of him, yeah. he probably could have called the X on that. But uh, yeah, especially this last draft, this last draft, things broke really well for him. Mm -hmm. Now, I would have loved a more offensive defenseman at number 11, but by, Sam Dickinson had a hat trick, I think, the other day. Yeah. The juniors, like <laughs> he's he's doing well. I think he's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, and then they got another defenseman, uh, Salen Whalen. What's can we get his name so I'm not like completely <laughs> just off the well at Barracuda Luca Cagnoni is going off well he's going off too yeah. but I just specifically this last draft they got another defenseman and then they got that the Russian winger um, in the second round and they got a pretty good thing going Chernyshov is Chernyshov Milanius Leo Shalin oh yeah that's oh, what I'm talking oh, about oh, I see. those four guys were all kind of with all high high. High ratings, so I think they, they. I mean, that's why they're one of the top prospect pools in the in the league. So and getting Askarov too doesn't hurt oh, the man, team. That guy. Question: How are you <laughs> saying his last name? It's Askarov. It's Askarov. Yeah. You've asked him, and he said this. We, we've asked him. You've this, asked him. Yeah. Okay. There I, I asked Askarov. <laughs> it's not right. It's, it's not correct. Right. It's not. No, it's, it's not. That's right. the American. That's version. how he wants you saying it. Cause so I had this conversation with him. I said, "Isn't it Askarov?" And he's like, "Yeah, but even when you say it like that, it sounds it sounds bad." So just say it the other way. He said, "So just say it the other way." And yeah. So every and you know, Sharks PR helps out with these things. And yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They like recorded him saying it, and he yeah. just said, "Yaroslav Askarov." So okay, that's what you're going with. It's the American version. So we know. But just so thing. we know, it's the wrong way, but that's what he wants. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sensory. Well, and you asked Dan Rusinowski too. He's he's a guy. Oh, yeah, like yeah. he speaks Russian too, and yeah. he he told me he's like most Russian names. The emphasis is on the second to last syllable. And but that's just not how he's wanting to go yeah. by. So you know, maybe we just need to get better with pr word pronunciation, which is a huge <laughs> thing. Going back to the smaller markets or moving around, that's a huge thing for me, is because. People care about their names. Yeah, mm -hmm. they want it to be said right. Yeah, especially we, we talked about Hawaii. Polynesian names are hard, and if you don't get them right, like there's a lot of family heritage, culture, proud pride right. they take yeah. in it, and like so you work hard. And so you know, I'm watching like there's a lot of names, Polynesian names, also in yeah. college football. Then like they're butchering this. They're just not doing it right. But also, Mikhail Granlin. I Mikhail always trips me up because I want to say Mikhail, but it's yeah. Mikhail. But then, like last night on the National, they say Mikhail or Mikhail. So like, we can't even, as a league, we can't even get it right. <laughs> yeah. Like if, if everyone, and then also to, you know, everyone within your organization should also say your name correctly. So that's also yeah. a thing. So yeah, that just, names are names. Like we should just be saying it the say way. We, we, could be worse. He said Michael Granlin the other day. Oh man. <laughs> Mikhail, Mikhail, Michael. Um, I put, like, when I write it, so I remind myself, I put M-I dash Kyle. Yeah. So that I just read it. I'm like, okay, Mikhail. But that's easier. Every, every yeah, time. that's smart. No, we had Dan on the show before, mm. and he's told us that he's he will specifically go to certain players and ask them how they want it yeah. announced. And he says a lot of times, not a lot of times, some of the times, the players will mess with them. <laughs> and they'll tell him, one week, it's this way. And then two weeks later, they'll say, no, 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 you've been saying it wrong. Well, and they'll change it again on them. Well, because Askarov told Dan, and I don't know if this is because Dan speaks Russian and has that ability, the other way. So he told Dan it was Askarov. Oh, he did tell Dan that. Or, or someone. He yeah. He, he, to go into back to your Dan. point. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. Someone, he told someone one week it was that way. And that, so that you just got to come, you got to find it. And then once you do, just got to go with it. So it is Askarov. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yaroslav Askarov. That's how we'll do. We'll Americanize the heck out of it and just Askarov. All right. Done. Speaking of Askarov, <laughs> do you think he's going to get called up at some point, or are they just going to wait for an injury or trade? Do you think he works his way into the uh, Sharks lineup? I think he's pushing. I mean, I, he um, he was two and a half two and a half games of a shutout. Mm-hmm. If he got that third shutout, I was going to be hard, especially when you're in the middle of a losing streak, to be like, hey. We can't. You can't let this guy sit. Like you got to reward the kid at some yeah. point. I think we see him, um, and I don't know if it is for an injury or you know some maneuver down the line. But I, we're going to see him. I, I think they. I think also if you look at rebuilds, successful rebuilds in the NHL, their AHL team has been very good yeah. the year or two before mm-hmm. because again you learn how to win. You, and then also, if you're, you go to the playoffs, those young guys get to feel what a seven-game series is or something like that. So I think also it's probably important to the Sharks to have the Barracuda be successful and maybe make it to the playoffs this year. And when you have Askarov back there, you're probably going to make it to the playoffs because he's just that good. Um, he's been phenomenal. The Barracuda are off to an incredible start. Uh, so with that all being said, I think... He's going to play a handful of games with whether they make a move or not, or especially if someone gets injured. Yeah, he's coming up. Yeah, yeah, he, absolutely. It, absolutely. But uh, I think yeah, we see him probably. I think between if between now and the trade deadline, we probably see him. I don't know, a handful of times. So see, I think Blackwood is going to get traded sooner than later because there are some teams in the NHL that should be higher in the standings than they than they are. Colorado being one of them. And their goaltending has been not good. Yeah, well, if, I mean, if that is the case, he's coming up. Yeah. And I think, you know, he that's probably what the organization, I don't know, probably told him. It's like, yeah. hey, we're going to bring you here and you're going to be, He's he is the guy of the future. Like, you can't beat around the bush because they already gave him a d- two-year deal after this yeah. with some significant um, money on it. Not significant, but a good enough amount. Well, two million good for bump. a guy who has two NHL games in his yeah. career. That's- so he's their guy. And so I th- it's not without question, and I don't think we're like over speculating to say after the trade deadline, VTech or McKenzie probably aren't here. Yeah, with the San Jose Sharks, um, and so after the trade deadline, as long I think they're, you know, as long as I think the team also is in a good spot, we'll see a lot of them. If they think it's going to be better for him to win some games in Cuda, they you know might sit down there for a little bit, but there's no way he's not coming up for this season. Well, we're talking about um, you know how how the Barracuda look so far this season. They're, they're again off to a great start. Um, the Sharks, obviously, not so much, but the last two games here, as of this recording, at least back to back wins. Do you think? Well, first of all, I guess that the feeling around the team, uh, as you had alluded to earlier, has changed quite a bit. It seems like there's belief in the locker room again. Uh, with that sort of belief, kind of where do you see this team maybe ending up? this season at the end of the season uh considering that you know there's probably we're not gonna be a playoff team we're probably going to be sending some of these guys that are helping us uh compete now uh sending them off um do do you feel like this is a just a bottom 10 team as aaron thinks do you think we're looking at potentially another first overall pick like some of the fan base thinks where where do you see them landing it's funny because i think you can be anywhere those and still have a successful season Mm -hmm. in, in different aspects um, cause if let's say you win 25 games and you're still, you know, you still end up with the first overall pick, that's still a successful year and you mm-hmm. still get the first round pick. Now I have feelings about what they should do with that first overall pick if they get it, but I'm not the GM. Oh. Um, Are we going to get a hot take right now? I, I think they should trade it. Yeah. If they get the top overall pick, if, you know, just by listening to prospects and things there, the consensus I I've gathered from you know i'm not a prospect guy but there isn't a celebrating or bedard in this draft Mm -hmm. and if you can trade that first overall this is my hot take guys another hot take (laughs) all right power play top 10 this is my you know come back to this if this happens okay trade that for a significant help now asset that comes in and can add to your roster right away still stay within i would say you probably could still stay in the top five or top seven Mm -hmm. still get a you know a b plus prospect sure but you get a, a guy that's going to help your roster right now because what you don't want to you don't want to keep selling the future at some point, and that's also part of the reason why I think you see Celebrini and Smith here now, where not back in college, 
is because they're trying to, you know, expedite things a little bit. So that's my hot take. If they got the first overall pick and there was a there was a deal to be made for a significant upgrade on the roster, say, I don't know, a top four defenseman that can run your power play, I want to go get that. But those okay. guys, those guys aren't trying, aren't uh, growing on trees. But uh, yeah, so I think back to your question, where do I think this team is? I think, I honestly, I think if you're, in, I think if you're just in the conversation, come trade deadline about like you're close, like oh, you know, you're you're being a a tough out, and maybe you're. I don't know, within 10 points of the, you know, the last wild card spot. That's good. And then whatever you do from that point on, you know, you go for there. I think if you're within, if they go on a run here, which, you know, let's be honest, probably, you know, they're not going to win 10 <laughs> games in a row because right. who's going to, like, not many teams are going to do that. But if they go on a little run and they make it a difficult decision for Mike Greer, I think that's also a, a win. If Mike Greer has to think about what he's doing at the trade deadline, you, that means the first half of your season or 60%, wherever it kind of lands. Mm-hmm. It lands pretty late. It might even be like 70% of the so, season. Yeah. Like, that was a good a good year because you made your GM contemplate where they're going. Because, I, you know, everyone has plans until your plans, you get punched in the face. Right. Mike Tyson Tyson's, says so. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah the deadline's yeah. March 7th this year. It's pretty late. Yeah. yeah. I think it's generally There's, about 20 games left in the season before. The, yeah, this year they have no after. all-star game yeah, four, four nations yeah it's a two-week break so uh right after that two-week break they'll have maybe another week's worth of games. february the sharks play like eight games yeah or something less really, than eight i think yeah right? they have like two weeks off they have two major weeks they yeah have the two middle weeks of february so they might play like six or seven games then. so you think um that it might even be possible this season that they would have my career have to make that decision then because my, my whole thing was i think this year is another year where we started off with nine straight losses. I think even though we had two back-to-backs, I think that's kind of a little more telling of how the season's probably going to end up going. Um, although Aaron, I think, was a little more optimistic, again, thinking they are going to be bottom 10 as opposed to bottom of the league. Yep. Uh, but for me, I think next season is that season where we start seeing that that creeping towards the, the bubble team. Yeah, and I, I think it's all relative in the sense that what, what would make Mike Greer mm-hmm. flinch? I think if you really make him flinch, you're probably within five points. Yeah. Right. But to your point, I think it's probably somewhere in the middle because I don't think they're going to, I think, like we talked about, it's hard to lose nine games in a row. Like they're just probably, hopefully, not going to have that again. Four or five. So I think, yeah, I just. I, w- I think I just solely I want them so badly to not <laughs> to not to not be like if they're closing in on 30 wins 25 30 yeah. wins I think that's a, that's probably where you're gonna sit and if you get more than that then you get more than that and then you kind of go but I think the only reason why I have a little more optimism is that the guys seem to really believe they have a team that can win NHL games mm-hmm. you saw it in like Warsaw's yeah. videos after their wins it's mm-hmm. like they believe they can win games and that's like we could talk about it all we want but if the if the locker room and dressing room starts believing that belief is a crazy thing so is confidence confidence is the confidence is a hell of a drug because <laughs> the you from the utah third period to yeah. the end of the kings game they look like a team that could be a bubble playoff team look at yeah. zetterland's goal last night when he scored yeah it just, was a two-on-one and he just ripped it past yeah. him and he said he was oozing with confidence. And after. you just, if you start shooting, they, they needed to start shooting more from the point. Mm-hmm. And they did that in the third period against Utah. Every All those goals came from the point. Except, no, even Wenberg in overtime, it was a shot mm-hmm. from the point. Yeah, the, the glass. Direct. Yeah. They just weren't shooting. Their def- defensemen were not getting up on it as much in the offensive zone as they could have. But the last four periods, small sample size. But if you can bottle that, and that team starts believing that they can bring that every night. Mm-hmm. Belief is a hell of a drug too. Yeah. Belief and confidence, and you never know what happens. There's, you know, Drew likes to talk about that that '93 team. I think that was scheduled to be the worst team in the league, and they yeah. made a play playoff push. So yeah. you just never know. Yes, you put yourself quite a bit behind the eight ball, but also <laughs> if you look at the standings right now, they have six points. Mm-hmm. I, they're not really that far oh, back. Yeah, they're like, one point behind Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Chicago, to, Nashville. Yeah. 
And if you go to Western Conference, but they got they got the league right where they want them right now, right? I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that. I just like the top seven, right? Yeah, you're five points out from seven. That, yeah, yeah. Like two wins, two or three wins. So it's not like if they went on a little run here, they wouldn't be the worst team in the league anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, like even if they win, if they win against Chicago, which is a game on paper, two teams in the rebuild. Mm-hmm. If they get their third win in a week. They're now at eight at eight points. They draw, they would have a spot. They'd have a shot. And so it's early enough in the year that, yes, you lost seven games, but unless you're at the top of the conference, you yeah. haven't run away with it. They're still in the middle there. And so you just never know. So interestingly enough, uh, last week's episode, mm-hmm. uh, we talked about the upcoming games, right? which was uh, Utah um, up through what, Vancouver, right? Yeah. So um, we're at the, we're at the tank on Saturday. Y- yeah. yeah. So my, my prediction was, okay, they're, they're probably going to end up losing against Utah, but then they're going to come back with some confidence against an LA team that they were close to the first time they played them. Yeah. Uh, and they're going to rattle off three straight. And the reason they're going to do that is because they're going to build off of the confidence. Chicago's not that hard of a team. Um, we can we can hang with those guys. I know it. Just got to shut Bedard down. And then Vancouver, that's my birthday, so they're going to show up. That's, okay. That was my, my rationale for that. Okay, So they were going to lose and then rattle off three straight. Well, they played Columbus before that? I don't no. think so. Oh, no, no, no. this Saturday. This yeah, Saturday. Yeah, 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 yeah. So And then they played Columbus. They mm-hmm. they surprised us, uh, or me, not you. You said they were going to win in Utah. They, I said Utah, but I was surprised about the LA game only yeah. because it was a back-to-back and a travel day. So I thought that was going to be a scheduled loss. So I'm hoping I was just wrong about Utah, and the rest of it is uh, <laughs> four games. Paul Stradamos. That's yeah. what we're, like, we're going for, buddy. I mean, if you get there, Columbus is a team yeah. that you sh- at gettable. And if if things break right with Celebrini, the return of Celebrini Absolutely. against Columbus, because that, that's officially the first day he could come back. Mm-hmm. That place would be pumping again, especially if you've gone four in a row at that point, and you beat Vancouver, who you probably I much mean, better team, much yeah. better team. Uh, but if you beat Vancouver, you come in and you have your you know your franchise's hope coming in there on on that on that Tuesday, the place would be going. Yeah. Uh, and then and at that point, if you win, that's what I'm saying. It's so early in the year that if you just rattle off two or three wins, you're back within. You know, no one's yeah, gonna be so like, so oh, close. this is like oh, the Sharks of old, like it. You just you never know, and they have they have like to your point. This week is kind of set up. This homestand is set up for them to make a little noise. Because even if you don't win outright, if you push one or two of those games to overtime, get a point. Which you know we can all talk yeah. about the overtime point system, but uh, <laughs> you know you can get you can get Not there. The only one you see that. So, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> like he hates it. He wants ties. The ties no. or or Change give the, the winner or give the winner three points, yeah. three. So whatever. So three it's a two, regulation. It's a two two, two yeah. deficit, whatever. It so is. every game has three points up for grabs. Yeah, that makes sense. Every yeah. I, I explained my five point system. No one wants to hear it, but that's five okay. points. Five points. Well, there'd be a lot of. Uh, but yeah, I think it all starts with you know they should come out pretty pretty fired up on Thursday. Yeah. They played they played bad. They they played not very good. Yeah. Pretty bad against Chicago, and it's a team that they probably want to play better against. Yeah. You know, if should play better they against, play, yeah. I mean, but the problem with that game was you gave them power plays and you put Bedard on the power play with extra room. See you later. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's like just not going to work out they, for you. Yeah. This we talked about last week. They get rid of their stick infraction yeah. penalties, the dumb penalties, especially ones taken in the offensive zone. You're giving up two, three power plays, not six yeah. power yeah. plays like last night. You're going to have a much better chance of success. Plus, the top 10 power play. That's right. You're really going to. That's yeah. We said two weeks ago, I yeah. said, you want to be the team that everyone says, we need to, coming into San Jose, saying, we need to stay out of the penalty box. Otherwise, we're going to give this team a chance to win. And that's what the Sharks need to be. And despite killing all six uh, uh, PKs, right? Despite killing them all, you still don't have possession of the puck during that time. Yeah, so right. that, that hurts you. Yes. Uh, even if you're able to shut them down, right? Because you're not generating anything in that. As long as you don't. Like, I think the only way. The PK helps you. It does help you if you rat them off in a row like they did. But also if you don't really give the other opponent a ton of grade A chances, then you kind of feel good. But, yeah, even if you don't have the puck Mm -hmm. or, you know, you could get a shorthanded goal here and there, that could help. They've had chances shorthanded, I think, the Mm -hmm. last two games, like good chances. They hit the post last night, I think. Uh, Who was it? Granlin? Uh, No, Granlin on his... Like he got tripped and he fell fell on his knees. They must have... They had multiple because Granlin... 
their defender fell. Yeah. And then Granlin was on a breakaway yeah. from like center ice. Um, and I thought that was going in. Totally. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I think, you know, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic still. It's still early. I don't <laughs> want to really throw the whole towel in. I know it's probably crazy and people are like, oh, well, I just, I think you just, the first 15, 20 games, I think you get a really good feel for, you can keep moving the goalposts though. Yeah. You, you, some people say the first 10. But even at the first 10, I think they probably played good enough to win two or three of those games. Sure. Um, and they just didn't, I mean, they should have won. You have a three goal lead in the, in the third period, opening night in your own barn, you should win that game. And he, if they if they just have won opening night and then lost the next right. eight, yeah. everyone Changes. would have been like, oh, cool, man, we still won the first game, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it's just like, they were this close from changing the whole narrative. Yeah. And that's, I think, what you people need to realize is how close and how the margin for error in hockey and whatever it's so close and you could be you could be doing everything right we saw in some of those games where the other opposing team got some good bounces yeah but you make your luck as everyone likes to say and that's just how it goes so you talked a little bit about being optimistic for the season i'm curious about your optimism level for logan couture um obviously we have our thoughts on that um I wish him all the best, and I hope that he does come back to play. But our thought is that if he's been gone for this long and he only got to play a handful of games last season and he's Mm -hmm. back out again, didn't start this season, even after a long break, um, is there a certain feeling uh, from maybe the group or from him about his possible return? I know he was on the bench with the suit and tie and everything else, so he's still obviously part of the organization. He, to... I mean, he met with the media during media day, and then he, on the first day of training camp, he also had a press conference. And in that press conference, he kind of said he wouldn't be doing these things if he didn't think that he could make it back at some point. Okay. Uh, and that's, but he also said he hasn't stepped on the ice since January, game, right? January, whatever that was last mm-hmm, year, yeah. when he hurt his, you know, his groin again. And it's one of those injuries where. You can't really have surgery on it, or there's varying opinions on if you should get surgery on it. It's kind of just got to let it heal, stuff like that. So it's not, and it's not like a broken leg or yeah. something like that where it'd be cleaner. But I think he still is pushing to come back. Um, you know, he's trying to stay as optimistic as possible from the comments he made, but he also understands it's a hard road. But he yeah. also said he hadn't really thought about retirement. Um, so, but I also haven't heard or seen any reports that he's made any progress since training camp which is now a month and a half ago um but we it'd be great for the team to see him back and also in those six games he played they were four and two mm-hmm. oh, if, yeah. if logan comes back in even like an 80 percent capacity then you all of a sudden have a team that can might score a little bit and, mm-hmm. and it could change things a little bit but yeah i think I think he's optimistic, and I think the fan base should still be optimistic that they see him. Um, I don't know if what capacity that'd be, and hopefully he gets out back on the ice, and hopefully it's this season. Um, they do, in the sense of when you look at it from the money side, they don't really have to put him on long-term IR because they have plenty of cap space, yeah. so yeah. they can kind of let they this... They kind of need him to be on because... <laughs> yeah, they can kind of so let him the... ride this out and yeah. see how long it's going to take. He's also their captain. They're going to let him do it do whatever he can. He means a lot to the franchise. Yeah. So they're going to let him kind of do as much as he can. Cause they don't really have to like him and Vlasic as well. They're big contracts, but they're not hurting their cap situation. Right. So they're not going to do anything that's going to really pain that or try and do some cap flexibility as we've yeah. seen other NHL franchises do while putting guys on a long-term IR and then they're yeah. magically ready for the playoffs. I hate that. So I, I hope he comes back. I hope if he comes back, if nothing else, you know, it's some sort of victory lap. Yeah. You know, and he comes back and... Because you're also in a tough spot from the captaincy side of things. Like, you, you don't... Just like they say, you can't lose your spot for an injury, like you know, a concussion or something. You know, in the sports is what they say, but you're also not going to want to... You don't... You can't strip your captain of the C just because he's working so hard to get back and they're not out there and he hasn't right. been there for a couple, couple seasons. So... It kind of puts him in a weird spot there as well, but overall, I know he's he's still engaged with the team. He still comes around and tries to talk to the guys. I know he, was, he talked to Celebrini during training camp and stuff, so 
I think he's he's as much a part of this team as he can be. I think there's just a quiet optimism about it. I don't know what that means though, really, because I don't think he, to he even said he doesn't know what it means. And so when you're, I mean, if you're a player saying you don't know what the next step is, yeah. like it's just you're in a tough spot. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. I, it, it sucks. It sucks because I mean, I, I, again, he's been a mainstay in this franchise for the longest time, and he's a fan favorite, and he's um, I mean, playoff beast. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and he he does everything you want, right? Especially we talked about Greer's guys and the blue collar guys, the bring your lunch pail to work type of guys. I and mean, this is somebody who plays a two hundred foot game. Um, he's not just all offense, you know. Um, he he does everything that you want him to do. And it's part of the reason he's the captain, of course. Uh, and to see him being sidelined kind of against his will here, right? It's, it's what the body's doing to him. Uh, it just, it sucks. And again, I wish him all the best and I hope he does return. And I can't even imagine how that tank is going to just erupt if uh, he does get to suit up uh, during the season here. I mean, if, if he gets, makes a comeback, it's just going to be nuts. I'm sure he wants to play with Celebrini. Oh, too. yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? Yeah, I think he, I, I think he does. I, th- I think he knows, too, that he wants to come back. And he... he he would like to be here for some of the, uh, you know, he would like to be a part of a team that has some positivity around it too. Mm-hmm. Like even if they're losing some games, there is a clear direction of where this franchise is going. Yeah. Um, and s- compared to the last couple of years where, you know, maybe not feeling that great. So I think he'd probably want to come back where there's a little bit more energy in the building, a mm-hmm. little bit more energy within the team too. Because, hey, like you, you, you feel for a guy that is going through an injury that may or may not shorten his career. It's obviously shortened the amount of games he's played yeah. because he's just working. It's been like a year and a half. You just don't like to see guys lose their career to injury. You want I always want guys to just walk out on their own and say, "Hey, I, you know, I did the best that I can." And because I'm sure, you know, there's a level of what if yeah. in that situation. Yeah, you always want to go out on your own, not be told, not, not when, be forced out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Brutal. Did they force you out of soccer? Well, that my felt knee, personal. kind oh, of. Okay, yeah. <laughs> my body, same way. Like yeah, it just yeah. <laughs> Kind of slowly faded away because just getting older and hurt. And yeah. I'm not a professional player that gets professional treatment and yeah. time and whatever to get back to health. So, yeah, I don't know. I still play. I played a couple weeks ago yeah. for the first time. Good, it's good. I'm right still feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've certainly taken up a ton of your time, um, but one last thing here: if there's anything that you want to say to the fans or just like a message uh, whether it's about you or about the team you talk about optimism again host and philosopher <laughs> fire away no i just i think mainly it's just thank you for you know being allowing me this space and then also thank you guys for all coming around for the viewership and still watching sharks pre and post and intermissions and intermissions and intermissions They're important. Uh, I think just stick with it. Stick with the Sharks. I think there is a clear direction of where they're going. Stick with us. I think I think the level of TV that we produce for, especially for Sharks, I think there's people on our team that, you know, people don't know about. Like you see the people who are in front of the camera, but there's so many other people that um, really care about the product and what we're doing and telling the stories that we just want to bring the best to the fans, even on nights where maybe the team doesn't have it. We want to bring the best that we can. And uh, I think that's one of the things that, you know, you learn is like, you got to still bring it when, when the energy yeah, levels, yeah. because the team doesn't bring it, you still got to bring it. But uh, yeah, just stick with us. We're going to all figure this thing out. And hopefully in a couple years, we're all around together and we can all bask in the glory of <laughs> another playoff run. And hopefully it doesn't end up on your bathroom floor. Like, you know, the last 20 years. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah, That's much much smaller right. scale, but yes, Aaron and I deal with that uh, the same sentiment um, <laughs> in the past couple of seasons now, where it's like, well, we're just gonna do these shows as best we can. And try just to get all humming. We've been uh, we've been described as therapy uh, for yes. Sharks fans, yeah. so, which is which is yeah. good. Yeah, that's yeah. what you want. You, I think you want people to. If you can have like a therapeutic experience, yeah. where guy, people can come and like cleanse themselves of whatever they're feeling. I think that's good, and I mean that's at the end of the day, whether you're making these shows for an internet audience or for TV production linear, we're still in the entertainment business, right? Like mm-hmm. this is still supposed to be fun. Yeah. You're still supposed to have a good time. And yes, like I'm, you, you know, will admit, I'm still just making sure that I can get my X, Y, and Z in order. And then hopefully a little more personality will come out because you, you know, you want to take steps. You want to jump. Yeah, like, I just yeah. want to have fun all the time, yeah. but you got to kind of feel it out. But 
yeah, at the end of the day, we're still just doing stuff that we think is entertaining. We want you to be entertained. And, you know, if the team wins, that makes things a lot better. But we're still going to do our best to entertain you and uh, make sure that you can all come along for the the therapy that is being a San Jose Sharks fan. Because really, being a San Jose Sharks fan, even going way back, it's hasn't been. (laughs) So much heartbreak. There's been no no Stanley Cup. Uh So, yeah. It's all just been pain at the end of the day. This is just a different kind of pain. <laughs> but, uh, as Aaron has said several times, uh, jump on the bandwagon. There's plenty of room, right? Always. Uh, always we're, room we're, bandwagon. <laughs> we're going the right direction. And uh, if you're not already a Sharks fan, you need to be one right now because, again, things are on the uh, the uptick. We're going in the right direction. The, the new the, core. The yeah. new core is being formed right now. The future Absolutely. is teal. As yeah. like the future say. is Absolutely. teal. Hashtag. Worst hashtag. It. I don't like it. <laughs> should go back to SJ Sharks. but. <laughs> well, I still use SJ Sharks. Yeah. yeah I because it's hard to, when you're formulating tweet, to be right. like, oh, the future is teal, scored a goal. Yeah. Like, that just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just usually put it at the bottom if I really want something to get kind of latch on to the mm-hmm. hashtag game. Yeah. I get, I get the messaging, but I think it was just not well thought out when it comes to doing things like tweets like rig messages and whatnot. Yeah. So. it's also longer than SJ Sharks and that's annoying less, less, less characters you get to use <laughs> well just gotta pay Elon uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that ain't happening <laughs> no he's got enough money we don't need yeah. Tony uh, anymore uh, he's gotta make back the money yeah. eventually yeah. Yeah. Um, well guys that was episode 223 uh, that was fantastic thanks so much for your time really do no appreciate problem. you having on here um, again congratulations on your role and uh, congratulations on being the first person to be the third person uh, on this set added to the LinkedIn profile yeah, um, yeah so it, that was it was a great uh, discussion hopefully you guys enjoyed that I uh, got a lot out of it. If you like stuff like this, again, like button, hit the subscribe button. We have more things like this uh, throughout the season, you know, about our lives. Those are a lot of fun. So please jump into the lives as well. And if you can, the best thing you can do, share us out to all your Sharks friends and family. So do appreciate Like that. and subscribe, as they say, right? Yeah, like, like, subscribe. like comment, subscribe. Those, yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> and also, if you need to follow me, it's a Hoshita Sports across all socials. Yep. There you Should go. Send that. Yeah. Down, so there. down in the, yeah. the description down below. Be I can point because it'll be there by the it'll time. It'll be on the screen. Yeah. It'll be on the screen. <laughs> in post. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Our next show is going to be on November 10th. It's a Sunday. It's the viewing party game against the New Jersey Devils. It's an away game. So the game starts at 4. We'll be there to watch the game. And then we will go live roughly 7, 7.15, whenever the game's over. And you get to stay and be part of the audience and the peanut gallery laughing at Paul and I as we go through a live episode in person. Boom. <laughs> Is that exactly, that. exactly that. Exactly yeah, that, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. you, you're doing it right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to boo too, we are also have our first uh, pre and post from the tank this season on Saturday the 2nd okay. against the Vancouver Canucks. We will be out there a little bit more this year. I mean, last year I know there weren't out a, a whole lot, but we're going to be out there maybe a dozen times and the, we go out against Canucks and then also the next time, I guess, I bet you guys can guess when's the next time we're going to be out there for. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jum- Jumbo's retirement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that game's coming up. That's in November. Yeah, yeah so we'll uh, be out there. We're still in October. I'm yeah, October yeah. mind still. So, yes, we'll be out there uh, and come out. We'll be out there. And if you have kids, I am a card collector, but I have a bunch of cards and I pack them up. And so hmm. for the kids, we'll hand out a couple cards. Nice. So I heard pre and post. Are you going to be doing intermissions? Yes. We okay. Will. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. People you know will, to show up. You will be there. I will be there November it's, 2nd. Again, birthday. birthday, which of yeah, course means the San Jose Sharks win over the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> so uh, show up. Let me know that you're there. We'll meet up and say hi or whatever. But come uh, check them out as they're doing the uh, intermission lives. <laughs> so pre and <laughs> yes. post. So uh, Aaron, is that, that everything you got? Any yeah. other tidbits to add? No. Uh, no. No. That's it. Any last words? No. Nope. All good? Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I uh, do appreciate you being here. Can't wait to see you guys live in Encore and Vino and live in the chat uh, the next time we do a live show. So uh, for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. I'm Aaron. And that's Alan Hoshida. And we will see you guys uh, on the 10th. <laughs> Apparently on the 10th. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.